Mike's. January 22nd, 2015, and Pastor Mike is here, and we've got a lot going on down here at the church. We've got some video to show you we shot a few days ago, but he wanted to kind of tell you what's going on. So, Pastor Mike, what's going on? Hey, Wayne, well, we're out here in, uh, next to the furnace. Uh, the church uh, that the Lord had us build, or we're still building, um, uh, one of the first things that we felt like we were supposed to do is that it was going to be a building that was heated with wood. That was something that sounded unusual to folks uh, at the time, but now uh, it's something that's done uh, fairly fairly commonly. A lot of the farmers in this area have their have their large buildings that their, their workshops and where they store combines and and heavy equipment, big buildings. They heat like this. It's radiant heat. The floors are concrete, and in that concrete there are pipes that run uh, all all everywhere. Uh, in the floor and through those pipes run hot water. All the hot water comes from uh, out here. This is a furnace that we got from uh, up near the Canadian uh, border. It's uh, a central boiler. They're a large company and this one was the largest one that they made uh, at the time. It looks almost like an, a storage building, but actually inside there's a very large firebox. Uh, it will hold about a third of a pickup of wood all at one time. Um, uh, it runs on a thermostat so that uh, the firebox is surrounded by, um, by a water chamber. The water chamber holds, I'm not positive, but I think it was 640 five gallons of water is is actually all around the firebox above it and perhaps below it i don't know about that the fire is inside the chambers inside and uh, as soon as the water around it gets to be at a preset temperature we keep this as low as we can so 150 um, degrees this is like in other words a giant water heater that sits outside I don't know what it'll look like. The, right now, the, right, whoa, right now the temperature's 123. We came this morning and it was down a little bit. Uh, so right now uh, the fire is uh, trying to get trying to get going again. Everything that happens here happens slowly. When we first bought it, and I would come out and build a fire, I would come back the next morning, and the wood would all be black and look like charcoal, no fire, no smoke out the chimney or anything. And I thought it was going out. But the truth of it turned out to be is that when the water gets the temperature that it wants inside, then there's a there's like a guillotine that's right down here that goes over the, the few little holes that allows air inside. And it actually just nearly suffocates the fire, but not completely. There's just enough to keep it going. That's the mode that we're probably in now. And so then when the, when, when the thermostat here says that the water is less than 150, usually about 135 to 140, it'll open up those vents and air will begin to go. And it may take an hour or two before it really, really uh, gets going. But everything about the whole system happens slowly. It heats up slowly, it cools down slowly, and wood in here normally we just load it once uh, once a day in the morning. Now Wayne's already loaded this, and we'll see what it looks like. It's smoky right now. Yeah, give it a chance to draw some of that up. Well, it's hard to see, but this this box goes back about five feet deep. And it's about uh, probably a three, a three feet, maybe three and a half feet wide. And uh, it's about, oh, I'd say it's at least four foot tall inside that chamber. So there's a bunch of, a bunch of room in there. The stove is smart, which is so amazing. When the water gets up to 150 and it doesn't need any more, it stops burning wood. It'll shut. It'll shut off, and you can hear that. You can hear the metal, the metal clank, and it just stops. If it's if it's warmed up and and the church doesn't need heat, and the and the water just sits here at the steady temperature, 
This can sit here for two or three days not doing anything except just barely smoldering. And then when this water temperature begins to drop enough, then it starts up and goes again. It's so wonderful because the church that we're building, we're building without borrowing any money. And we didn't start out with a lot of money. And so because of that, we, we're kind of pinching pennies and trying to be good stewards with the money that we have. And so the building right now, it's not, it's not finished, but the building right now is 10,500 square feet under roof. And there are times when our total utility bill doesn't hit $200. And what's so amazing is that we've also got um, an 1,800 square foot wood shop down the hill with power equipment that uses power. So right. this thing just d doesn't use much power, and so it doesn't take a lot of money uh, to maintain things. And so we're we're really grateful uh, for that. Our wood that you see around here, a lot of what we burn is just junk. It's stuff that uh, stuff that fell down. It's stuff that the tree trimmers. I came and cleaned up. It's trees that needed to be taken down. Uh, some of what uh, we've been working with this morning is about half rotten. Uh, it doesn't really matter to this furnace. It can be it could be soaking wet. It can be green as a gourd. It can be old and rotten. It doesn't really matter. You put it inside, and eventually, uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna burn and turn to ash. We only have to clean out the furnace, even though we burn. This is an estimate. Even though we burn about 30 really large uh, truckloads a year or more, uh, it, it only makes maybe uh, 300 uh, gallons, 250, 300 gallons of ashes altogether. So it's really, really, really efficient. <laughs>
standing before because I wanted you to get an idea of the size and scope of what we're doing. We have, we have used uh, uh, much more wood already this year than everything that you see here. Uh, on a good day's work, uh, we're splitting about uh, five, uh, sometimes six loads like in my little Jeep, which I'm not calling that a truck load, but we use a little Jeep because it's light and it doesn't tear up the, it doesn't tear up the ground and make ruts and uh, also because it's four wheel drive. And so we can get in and, and get out of places without tearing up the ground because uh, by, uh, by the end of May, most of this will probably be gone and uh, we'll be mowing all of this with a lawnmower. So uh, all the area here, let me move around here, all the area here that is mostly open now from where this piece of wood was on the ground, where I'm standing right here, all the way down here was solid, as solid pieces of, of wood that the tree trimmers brought. They come and bring the, bring the pieces that normally uh, they are trash to them. They they need to. They've got more wood than they know what to do with. Some of them are paying to dump it, and so they're glad to come by. And they've got the trucks with the big uh, hooks, and they can pick it up. And they just they stack logs up in here. We're at the end of the process, which we we've, we've cut and split almost everything. We're down to the last uh, two or three percent uh, yet to do. But what we've had to do. We take the little Jeep and we'll, we'll come up and we'll hook onto a log that's up in that uh, tangle and then we'll pull them out one at a time and, and cut them up and split them and bring them in, and down, down here and use them.